Hey guys, it's Ben from Myers Woodshop. Today's video is really special. We have something in the shop I'm really excited about. This is the Palette 3 from Mosaic. This is Mosaic's third try at color printing. This is the Palette 3, not the Palette 3 Pro. Palette 3 will do up to four different colors in any 3D printer. Let's go ahead and open this box. Now this is a early release. The hardware is finished, but the firmware is not. I will have to update it to a final version once we opened it. The packaging is really nice. It shows us everything of what is inside. Very high quality, Apple-esque. Let me lift up the top to see what's inside. All right, right on top, we have the getting started and a mosaic sticker. So we have the sticker, we have the thank you, then we have the getting started with palette three. Palette three is white, and from what I understand, the palette three pro is black. So here's what all should come inside this and how to connect it up. All right, we'll lift up this foam. And here is the Palette 3. Well, here is the unit itself. It is pretty hefty. I'm saying a good 20 pounds, 10, 20 pounds or so. This is what the unit looks like itself. All right, also inside the box, we have these three rods held in by some tape. I don't know what they're for. Lift up the foam. We now have the stand. Very nice metallic stand. Reminds me of like a monitor stand. We have another rod. Looks like we have four rods. In this box we have, I believe, the power plug and a few other things. See, we have different power adapters depending on where you live in. I don't believe I'll use any of those. I live in the United States, so this looks correct. Be able to unlock this and change out the adapter depending on what country you're in. And that's the power plug. And then here we have a USB key, USB stick, mosaic branded. We have two plastic, I'm not sure what they are, Velcro strips of some sort. We have a old school style uh, USB adapter like to a printer. And we have the micro USB. And finally we have the, looks like a Torx screwdriver. Below that we have two hard plastic shells of some sort. Find out what those are in a minute. And then below that is an empty box. I missed a piece in this foam. Here's some PTFE tubes. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is assemble this. And these plastic things are actually what holds the filament. So we stick some rods in here, stick two rods down below, and then we're gonna do two rods into this one. And once they're in, we're just gonna push them together. And that's the base. And you wonder how you're gonna put the upper rods in, but they actually slide in through these slots up here so you can remove them when you need to change the filament rolls. So here's a roll of filament. You're just gonna stick it through this slot and you're gonna stick it down in like that. And we can have multiple rolls up here on this roller. You're gonna to have to have a lot of room for this machine to work. You're gonna have your uh, filament holder, you're gonna have the pallet itself, and then you're gonna have your 3D printer. So make sure you have room enough for all of this. I'm not gonna be using this. I bought something different in its spot. So I purchased the RepCord box that holds your filament in rollers and everything comes out down below. And I'm gonna hang that on my wall above the printer, a little bit uh, more nice and tidy. And since I'm in a wood shop as well, you can see it's in an enclosure and that will keep all the dust and stuff from getting on my filament. So that's what I'm gonna be using, uh, an aftermarket RepCord 2 box. Manual doesn't show how to attach this to the stand, but I believe it just slit, sits inside this clip up like that and sits down. There is no hardware attaching this to anything. So it just sits in 
just like that. All right, here's the side of our pallet. We have two USBs, the old school printer USB and the power plug. So we'll plug the power plug into here. Looks like we're gonna get a printer style USB right here. And then this USB to micro USB on its side. Also looks like our power on and off is right here. Okay, so what we have here, I'm gonna take it off the stand, is we have four inputs right down here. One, two, three, four, and one output up on the top. It does have rubber feet, so you could lay it flat like this and have all your inputs coming in here and out like this and not use the stand. It also does have wall mounting screws, so you can mount this on the wall either this way or this way. And that's good. One thing I'm concerned about is ideally you want it this way because the filament will come out the top, but I'm gonna be going the other way around and I'm not sure if this screen will rotate depending on how this uh, physical pallet is shifted. So we'll come to see that in another video after setting it up. But that is our ins and our outs. Again, this is the pallet three, so I have four. If you have the pallet three plus, you're gonna have eight. Some of the things that come in the box, I don't know where they go. That is these three Velcro pieces. They are not shown, they're shown what they are, but not shown where they go or what they stick to. This is labeled the extruder clip. This is for messing around with some stuff inside. We'll deal with that in a later video, but it does also have Velcro attachment on the back inside there. Again, it doesn't show you where to put that. All right, let's take a look inside to see the inner workings. So we should be able to just grab the fronts and pull it up. This is really cool. This is actually a magnet for the front. So there's no clips or anything to take off. It's magnets right here, so they attach here. That is a beautiful, beautiful feature to get on the insides. But let's take a look at the inside workings here. All right, so here we are. Here's the inner workings. You can see the four uh, inputs for our filament, and it snakes up around here. This is the uh, extruder, bringing it through, snakes up through here, and it comes into the cutter. So this cuts it. This is the splice core where it's gonna attach it all, and then it's gonna come through here, and this is the filament sensor, and it's gonna go out around the buffer here. So this is gonna push out farther or in farther, depending on uh, how much it's gonna go back and forward in and out the uh, scroll wheel end and it's gonna come out through here and come out the top. So let's undo these four, let's see, three bolts right here, holding this plastic piece in place. I do really like that these are very fat headed and I don't need any type of screwdriver to get at to anything on the inside. So we need to remove this clip here first and now we can lift up this piece and it kind of hinges in so we can get to the inner workings. So here's our PTFT E-tube, and you can see that the buffer is gonna kind of push out like this and push in, and it does have some sensors right here when this plastic will push down on it so the machine will know where this PTFE tube is within the buffering. I do really like that. We have the scroll wheel right here. This piece is gonna move around and let it come out of the top. We have the outgoing drive with a little spring here that'll spin, pushing it out. We have another sensor right here, right after the splice core. Now let's go ahead and take the splice core out. Remove that. And then we can lift the splice core right out and we can see what it's made of. It is very small. It's got a chip inside. It plugs into the back into yeah, maybe a magnet of some sort right there. Uh, this is where all the splicing is gonna happen. So I'm gonna place that back down in. And I'll screw it back down with this very large thumb knob. All right, over here, we're gonna keep going over to this plastic piece of acrylic that's holding down our extruder. And this is where all the filament magic happens, that changes. So the bottom piece lifts up, and we have our D1, D2, D3, and D4 sensors, so it knows where the filament is coming in. 
This will rotate and bring in the filament and in input retract. And then right under here is our lines where the filament will come in all four. So that's the essential parts that we actually get to with, um, we'll do some maintenance or whatnot when you're using this machine. Now in this splice core, we can rotate this and pull it out and we have our splice tubing. And that is exactly what is in this plastic bag. We have some extra, we have two extra for later. So that's what's in this plastic bag. And to replace it, we stick it back in just like that. And we rotate it back flat and stick it back into the machine. Now we're just gonna do the reverse and put everything back in its spot, getting ready to turn it on. All right, once everything's back in, again, all we do is take our lid and magnet right back on. This feature is really nice for later if we're slicing and mid-slice, we just pop the top off and we can actually watch and see if everything's working correctly. So make sure you have access to be able to take off the lid. So there you have it. That's the first look at the Mosaic Palette 3. This is the regular Palette 3 with four different color changing. Make sure to follow, subscribe, and like for the next videos where I actually use this machine to print out in multiple colors. Leave a comment down below on what you want to see me print with this Palette 3 in multiple colors. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Happy printing.